Hi everybody, this is Josh, and in this video we're going to continue refining our components and create some variants that we can use for maybe a dark theme for this kind of mobile design, user interface, card layout. So let's get started. So here we are back in Figma, and here's all the components that we made in our last video. I've just given myself a little bit of room to start creating some variants on these components. Let's start with the header first. I'm just going to select it. And then over here on the right hand side in the inspector panel, we can see there's variants right here. And I'm going to click that plus icon to add a new variant. And you'll instantly see a new copy that's contained all inside this header box right up here. And what I want to do is change the text color. So if I scroll down and underneath selection colors, I can target the black color here, which is the text. I'm going to change it to white. I also want to change the darker blue to a lighter blue, and this will look a little bit nicer on a darker background. We're going to do the same thing for our, our body component. On the right hand side, we'll click the plus button next to variant, create a new variant, change our text to white, and our dark blue to a lighter purple. Now you can see that the instance of our master button that we'd added to our body area here is still using that darker purple and that's fine that's exactly what i want actually so i'm already creating some overrides which really gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of power with these components you can override styles and override colors if i select this button now that it's this lighter purple over here i can see it's referencing the master button and if I hover over the four diamond icon here, it says go to main component, which will zoom me in right on my master button. If I select my instance button again, the three dot icon over here says instance options, and I can reset all overrides. And if I do that, it's going to go back to the default color that I've told it to reference. I'm going to hit undo because that's the way that I want it for the dark theme. The divider I'm going to leave as is because it's a semi-transparent uh, blue color here and I want to use that for both the light theme and the dark theme. So now we've got a bunch of stuff in here to play with. Let's check out the assets tab here and let's start building the light theme first. So let's add in a header so I'm just going to click and drag from the assets panel. We'll drag in a header, line it up here with our rectangle. We want some body copy, so I'll drag in a body component. And I'm just going to snap it to my rectangle and nudge it down holding shift twice, so I have a 20 pixel spacing between those. I might actually want 30, so holding shift, press down one more time, and that'll give me 30 pixels of distance between my rectangle and my body component. We can alt drag copies from right here on the screen like we normally do or we can drag and drop them from our assets panel and then line them up whichever way you prefer doing. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to lasso select everything and then press shift A. Remember that's our auto layout shortcut key. And now everything's contained inside of an auto layout. That's by default a vertical direction. I don't want any extra padding around this and I want to select my rectangle and change this to fill container so it will fill it horizontally if my layout expands. So if I start expanding it you can see it will also stretch out my rectangle. Let's go ahead and start styling this card. So I want to add a photo to this square here so we can just click the plus button for a fill open up our color picker, change it from a linear gradient to an image, and then choose an image file. I have one loaded up here already. That's what I want. And I'm going to change the blending mode here to luminosity. And that will affect how the image looks with the color underneath it. It will only transfer the value information, the light and the dark, or the luminosity of the image, none of the color. So if I change the color of the fill behind it, you can see how you can see how that works. You can choose whatever photo you want. And I'm going to select this frame. Let's 
double click and rename it over here in the layers panel. I'm going to call this our card layout. And now let's give this entire layout a fill color for our background. And white is fine on this. Let's give a border radius of 10 pixels. So we have a little bit of a rounded, subtle rounded corners. And then this entire layout, I can also give an effect to. So I'll, I'll add an effect, open up the drop shadow. Let's increase our blur to 10 and decrease the Y axis to three. That looks pretty good. So if we deselect, we can get an idea of what that's gonna look like. But let's say we didn't want a button in the first section here. Hold down control or double click and you can access the button that way and then just delete it. And we don't get rid of our master button that way. It just gets rid of that instance. Let's select our divider over here and we can actually just press control C on a keyboard to copy it. I'm going to then select our first body component here and then I'll just paste it. And because this is in a, inside of an auto layout, you'll see that it pastes it underneath right in line with my other content. And we can zoom in and we can see that it's flowing all the way to the left and the right. We can also just make sure over here on the resizing that it fills the container left and right. So again, if we wanted to resize this card horizontally, it will automatically fill the space all the way from left to right. So now we have a responsive design. This is a lot of fun to play with. Let's set our width back to 500. There we go. And now this entire card layout, let's alt drag a copy of this. And we'll just move it over to the side. If you hold shift, you can constrain your movements so that you can only move left and right so that you don't mess up your alignment. And I'll just uh, drag out a couple of copies here. And now what I can do is I'm gonna change the background of my second card by targeting the white here, and I'm going to choose a almost black color. It's 001011. It's a very, very dark gray. And then what I can do is use those alternate layouts. So if I select my header here, we can see we have, right now it's on default. If we drop that down, we have variant two, and we can actually rename these as well. If we select our master components over here, Instead of variant two, let's call this dark theme. And let's do that with all of our dark theme components. There we go. And now when we choose dark theme for our body and dark theme for the second body, you can see that it updates that way. I just reset my button. I reset the overrides on my button so that the text would be white once again. So now we've got two different themes here out of one layout really quickly. So this is great for being able to create things in sort of arrays like photo grids or user profile pages or being able to design things that will look like they could actually be used in a digital environment. And we can update things by just changing the images so we can override the master components, um, hold control and you can target inside of groups and components. And I'm gonna change my portrait here to someone else. We'll go to another uh, vector portrait that I did. Let's do Mary Doodles. And I can double click to get into the text field and I'll put her name in. And we can change our secondary text. Maybe this is designed for her blog. So you can make these whatever you want. If you want to create a personalized user interface card like this, you can add your own text. Maybe you want to do a bio, or this could actually be a really cool design for a resume as well. Really easy to update and add new chunks of information very quickly. If we go back to our assets panel, we can just continue adding. We could also uh, select things like this entire section and then just duplicate it and you can see our whole card just expanded. And if we want to add another divider, we can just drag and drop a divider in here.
I'm going to cut it to the clipboard, select my body copy, and then paste underneath it. There we go. So we can create little dividers for our sections there. Let's alt drag another copy. And I'll make one more change on this one. So I'm going to update the profile image. And I'll use my friend Roberto Blake. And we can also style this by just selecting the card and underneath our selection colors, we can update these colors very quickly. I'll change the purple to an orange and this dark blue also to orange. And now we have a new theme. If you want to give an effect on one of these buttons, like say, we'll select this one here. I'll double click to get into it so I can select that button. And we can give this one a drop shadow so it's like a hover state. And let's just up the blur amount on this a little bit. Something like that. And the entire card as well, we could change the shadow of just this particular card. And let's, let's give it something that we could really see. I'll, I'll give it a 60 blur and a y-axis of 20. And that kind of gives the illusion that this one has a higher elevation than the rest of them because it's casting a darker shadow. So there's our card, and I hope that you customize yours to your liking and be creative with this. The components and the auto layout feature, we used a ton in this project, and it's really helpful for being able to create dynamic layouts and create content. If, I, for example, I could double-click and start typing in my own text here, change this text, and you can see that the entire layout will flow or collapse to respond to the content that's inside of it. And I think this is a really good introduction to how web design really works. There's a bit of logic to this, but, but it's really nice to be able to have a tool that you can visually see how everything is laid out and repositioning and responding to the content and those margin rules and the padding and everything that we set up in our master components. So that's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.